Manchester United 2, Crystal Palace 1. Jeez, did we make that hard for ourselves. We had to suffer. We had to fight. We had to scramble for the three points towards the end. We had to show team spirit, man. We had to show in-game management. We had to show management of emotions as well. Um, and the game literally had a little bit of everything. It had us on the front foot. It had us in control of the game, completely in control of the game. Then it had us not really at our top level, but we get the second and the game's dead. Then it has a flashpoint from Casemiro, which I don't know what he was thinking. What on earth was Casemiro thinking? Um, and he gets himself sent off as well. Then Crystal Palace score. And then it's about battening down the hatches, biting down on the gum shields and coming through the game. It's another goal for Marcus Rashford as well, which is another thing I want to talk about. It's another uh, win at home in a row. Is that 12 at, at home now in a row or 13? Something like that. I'm losing count. So obviously there's positives. We won the game, but geez, about dissecting that, it was it was it was it was just a game that just didn't need to be that. You know, you get off to such a good start within the first what five minutes of the game, ten minutes, whenever the first goal was with the penalty early on with Will Hughes, and then you you, you wanting us to kind of you know go up levels, go up levels, and we just didn't do that. But before I even start, because usually obviously you're going to start at the start, but I want to start with the flash points. Casemiro, I, what was he thinking? I can't believe it. You know, this is a player who we've relied on. This is a player who was our talisman. This is a player who has so much experience. It, he just didn't need to get involved. And when you put two hands around the neck of an opponent, whether you shake them hard, whether you throw them to the ground, whether it's softly, it doesn't matter. In today's game, um, in this day and age, you're going to get a red card all day of the week. And you could tell by his reaction, the way he just walk down the tunnel. He knew, he knew. He's a, a, a rush of blood, a little bit of a hot-headed moment or a big hot-headed moment um, in a situation that was nothing to do with us. It was actually Schlupp, I think, who who, who kind of, you know, pushes over pushes over um, Anthony and there's a little bit of a fracas, but there's nothing in it. You know what I mean? School kid stuff. There was, there was nothing in it. It was youth level football, you know, youth level altercation. Few players come across, et cetera, et cetera. But Casemiro has overstepped the line. You cannot, you cannot put two hands around your opponent's neck. And I know we can say it wasn't even that hard. He doesn't even shake Will Hughes. He doesn't throw him to the floor. I understand all of that. But in today's game, it's, it's indefensible. And you know what? He's out for three games now. He's out for three games. The only positive, the only plus is that he doesn't miss the Carabao Cup final. But we've already got a long-term injury to... Um, Scott McTominay, sorry, Christian Eriksen. Donny van der Beek's already out for the rest of the season. McTominay's out. Luckily, we had Sabitzer today to even come in, and now he's going to get thrust into it. Um, so no positives there, apart from the fact that at least he doesn't miss the Carabao Cup final, um, because that would have been even worse today. And you know what? He almost cost us the points today. Let's just be honest. He almost cost us the game, and he will know that. But now to the positives, and I, I, you know, I want to extenuate these positives because they, you know, I feel like the game has been overshadowed now with that Casemiro sending off, and how the game ended up. It, it, it kind of takes it away from tactically what we was doing. It takes it away from letting our levels drop, and you know, we kind of went a little bit flat because actually, Eric Ten Hag made the right changes at the right time, took off their course, put on Ganacho, put Rashford through the middle, bang, two 0 So actually, in game and in terms of cruising to victory, it was there. But I want to leave that where it is because I want to talk about what happened after the red card because after pretty much conceding instantly after after Casemiro gets sent off, we just showed the heart of Lions. We just showed good grit, good determination, good team spirit to get through that difficult moment. And again, more in-game management from Eric Ten Hag. Going to a back five, leaving Rashford up front, having to take off um, Garnacho, which obviously the kid wasn't happy about. Not, not ideal situations, but again, you've got to blame Casemiro for that. Um, but Lissandro Martinez, what a beast. What a beast. We talk about Casemiro, right, and how lucky we are to have him and him arguably in, you know, our signing of the season, etc. But I tell you what, we've got a few contenders because Lissandro Martinez is out of this world. You know, he was on the end of absolutely everything. What a dog, what a fighter, what a warrior. That is what he was. That that, that game literally, you know, com, uh, encapsulates everything that he's about today. He was absolutely on it. He was on the end of every header, every interception, every block. Even the fouls that he committed were the right time to foul, just killing momentum, just really, really streetwise. And you know what? We say that we're lucky to have Casemiro and we, we look at his experience and we look how influential he has been for us. And he has up until this point where he's let himself down today. 
But Martinez has literally not put a foot wrong all season. He has been absolutely unbelievable. And he's he's a big part of the reason why we win this game today and don't concede more goals. He just was, the ball was like, you know that you get those games where the ball just seems like it's a magnet uh, to the player. You know, they just know exactly where to be and it looks like the ball's just finding them and they're in the right place at the right time. But it's not by accident. He just reads the game so well. He sniffed the danger so well and his anticipation of where the danger is going to be and just the aggressive nature, the shit shithousery, all of it, all of it compact. We are so lucky to have this guy. He is unbelievable. And him and Varane, to be fair. I mean, we conceded a sloppy goal, you know, after after we had a little bit of chaos, after Casemiro um, got sent off. But actually... Both centre-halves, Casemiro, Varane was very good today as well. Um, not better than uh, Martinez, but he was he was another one who, who really stood out today. I thought Fred was excellent as well. Again, when you're looking for that dogged performance, when the game's not quite going our way, when we have to show a little bit of a different way of winning a football match, Fred turned up as well, especially in the last sort of 10 minutes of the game when, when it was really backs against the wall, maybe even the last five minutes, actually, um, before we got to the seven minutes added on where the ref was a complete idiot. Um, but Fred was just showing that tenacity and again showing what he what he's what he's all about, which is heart, energy, desire. Yes, he does have ability as well, but you need these characters in your team. And you know what? They've done the manager proud in, in that and the fans proud in terms of showing the the dedication to get over the line because that of, of Manchester United of old, especially conceding after the red card, we would have capitulated. It was very easy to capitulate there. It was very easy to give up multiple chances to them. And we didn't do it. I thought Bruno, again, he had the heart of a lion today. Um, and it just showed the type of characters that we've got in the team. And this is why, this is why, although we're not polished yet, you know, you can look at Martial not being fit again and we're rolling our eyes and we're huffing, our, huffing and puffing and, and rightly so because he's not available. You look at maybe lack of, you know, certain options and, 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 and even though the bench was actually looking quite strong recently, even though we've got some key players missing, you can look at those things. You can look at style of play. You can look at, you know, in the game, you know, fourth thing in the game where we're, we're having a level of, of performance up here, then it's dropping down here, then it's going to the middle, then it's going up. Our performances are basically doing that. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know, like a cardiogram. It's like that. You just don't know what you're going to get. Um, but one thing you can say is look at the type of characters we're, we're bringing into the football club and look at the, the, the spine of the team and the strength of the team. Leaders. Uh, Marcus Rashford today, again, another talismanic performance, considering considering he maybe didn't have his best game. But again, he finds a way to impact the game and gets himself another goal. I don't care if you have, you know, 50, 60, 70 minutes of maybe not being at your best. But, you know, he cut in, I think he, he cut inside. He had a shot in the first half, forces a decent save from the keeper. Uh, cut inside from the left-hand side, good spot from Bruno, switches the play, cuts in. Should have really tested Gaetan, but didn't. So he's affecting the game. He's there or thereabouts. And when Eric Ten Hag made that switch to put him up front, right place, right time, strikers goal. They're the sorts of goals that you want to see Rashford scoring. And you know what is an even bigger testament to Rashford? How many times did we say that he's best off the left? Up front, doesn't really do it. Off the right, doesn't really do it. It doesn't matter where you're asking Rashi to play. The kid is making it happen. The comeback is complete. He is in sensational form. What has he got, 12 goals in 10 games or something like that since the World Cup? Um, uh, since we come back from the World Cup, he's been absolutely outstanding. And you know what? He's got he's, he's match winner today. He is the match winner today. And I want to big up Eric Ten Hag as well. Let's get, let's get to our beautiful manager. Let's get to Eric Ten Hag now because this guy is is basically dealing with all the elements. He's dealing with all the elements. They're coming thick and fast, whether it's off the pitch, whether it's on the pitch, in game. Um, it doesn't matter how. Whatever's thrown at his doorstep, he is dealing with it. Are we perfect? No, of course we're not perfect. But for where we are right now and what he has to contend with, he is just knocking down every problem and finding solutions to them um, in the moment. You know, I, look, he wouldn't have been happy with the first half. And again, to be fair, just like against um, Forrest the other day, where, you know, we're one nil up. When we got the goal so early, we just kind of was just going through the motions, didn't really create much. There was an era of control. I'm not saying David De Gea had a load to, had a load to do in the first half, but we just weren't on the front foot like you'd expect us to with being 1-0 up and, and in a comfortable position. So then we come out in the second half and it, you know what? It was more of the same. It was it was more of the same. We we were, again, a bit little bit lethargic. You have to give a little bit of credit to Crystal Palace because they upped the ante. They were a bit more aggressive. They forced, the, they forced the issue a little bit more. But we weren't at our best. 
again, you know, the level wasn't there. And Eric Ten Hag early on, so seen enough. You know, he got Veghorst off of, what, what, 58th minute? Something like that, before the 60th. Um, put Rashford up front, gets Ganacho on the left and, and Anthony on the right. And actually, the passions of play to score the goal was actually a very well-crafted goal. Patterns of play. We are seeing patterns of play from this team. We are seeing deliberate methods of play. We're just not seeing it consistently enough. We're just not seeing us being able to maintain the level of, of quality, intensity um, that Eric Ten Hag wants to see. We're not seeing that for a consistent basis, but the early signs are there and we're winning football matches and we're showing desire. And then, like I said, back to the Casemiro thing, the flashpoint happens where we're 2-0 up, we're cruising in the game. And actually, we probably, you, you, you never say guaranteed, but you would imagine, you would one would assume that we're going to go on in that game and win it quite comfortably. But again, Casemiro gets involved in a situation that he knows he shouldn't have. It's a massive, it's a massive miss for us. And you know what, Sabitza, um, he came on and he, he made a great tackle that actually would have put us on a counter attack. And Fippin Mariner, the Wally, gave a free kick. The referee was absolutely disgraceful today as well. He was disgraceful. He was a cheat. He was awful. Um, but Sabitza showed a little bit of what he can do. But he's going to have to be ready now because we're going to need him. We are going to need him. That midfield three is going to have to be Sabitza, Bruno. And Fred, at least for the next three games. And even when we need to maybe mix it up in games, you know, you've got two games against Leeds back to back. That's not easy. High energy games, high pressing, high octane football. Um, you know, when we start tiring and that, we're going to have to, you know, think outside the box because what else is there in midfield? You know, Jaden Sancho is going to have to uh, be a part of that as well. You might have to put Bruno in the middle sometimes and put Jaden Sancho in the 10 or, or we're going to have to come up with different solutions. Martinez, does he spend some time in central midfield um, during a game if we need to, if we need to, uh, you know, shake things up a little bit? Those are all things that Eric Ten Hag is going to have to sort out, but I trust him to do it. I absolutely trust him to do it. But again, not ideal. The main thing is that he doesn't, the only positive is that Casemiro doesn't miss the final. But other than that, what was he thinking? And he nearly cost us three points today. But well done to the team. A massive three points. Look, you see Liverpool getting spanked. Chelsea dropping points. Um, Arsenal obviously lost today. I know it's not really to do with us, but, you know, we've got to do our jobs. We've got to do our jobs. And that's what we've done. We got the three points. It should have been a lot more comfortable than that. That game was in the bag at 2-0. Um, and it took a turn for the worst. But we managed to get through it. So big up to that. Um, my man of the match, pff, I don't even think we need to talk about it, who the man of the match is. It can't be anyone other than the Sandro Martinez. What a player, what a, what a transfer, what a guy. Manchester United 2, Crystal Palace 1. Come on! <laughs> 